everybody, I'm Harriet Cameron, host of Down to Earth with Harriet Cameron, where we believe that the best is yet to come. So join us as you watch this broadcast and follow me on Twitter, on Instagram, and on Facebook. Visit my website, www.harrietcameron.com. Be blessed. Hey everybody, this is Harriet Kamek, the host of Down to Earth, the show in which we talk about the issues that matter. And today on our show, I want to talk about a woman who gave her all. That's right. She gave her all. That's what we're going to talk about today. It's taken from Luke chapter 21, verses 1 to 4. And in this story, we saw where Jesus interacted with a woman. This has been our series of Jesus' ministry to women and how the divine, the creator, Jesus, represented as God and man, how he interacted with women and empowered women. So far, we haven't seen any instances where Jesus had a negative reaction to women or where he denigrated women. And we're setting the stage for all of us to follow that when it comes time for us to interact with each other, and especially in our relationships, in our intimate partner relationships, even in our, our relationships that we work or relationships where we interact in church and so on, we're setting the stage to follow Jesus's example. Jesus's example to women were to empower women. His example to women was to empower. His example to women was to show the way. It was never to denigrate. It was never to tear down. So in this continuing series that we've been on, we're going to encounter a woman. She was a widow. She was poor. And she gave her all. And we're going to see what Jesus thought about it and what he said about it. That is an example for us to follow. The Bible says of itself that it is an example for those of us who are here who remain for us to follow. The Bible is replete with stories. And it's rep those stories are a mindful. Those stories are written so that we have a prototype. In fact, some even go as far as saying that the word Bible means basic instructions before leaving earth. That means it's instructive for us to follow these examples. It will help us in our activities of daily living. Amen? Amen. So while we contemplate that today, when I leave you with these words, I hope that they will bring you joy and peace and a clarity somewhat and an empowerment as to how we should conduct our lives. Amen. Amen. I also want to tell you a little bit about the Exodus Foundation. That is the nonprofit arm of Harriet Kamek Ministries. It's the organization through which we provide relief services to women in our community, women who have been distanced, women who have been impacted by intimate partner violence, who have been impacted by violence, whether it's sexualized, whether it's physical or emotional violence. We bring them into our facility and help them to recover. So I need your help. So if you can, make a donation to us. You can go to our website, harrietcamlet.com, or for more information on what we do through the Exodus Foundation, you're welcome to visit the exodusfoundation.com. Amen? Thank you so very much. So today I want to talk about She Gave Her All. Last week, we explored the woman and her oil, how a woman took a flask of oil and broke it and anointed Jesus. Well, this week, we are meeting another woman, a woman who had an encounter with the divine, who had an encounter with Jesus, and how that is instructive for us to follow. We're going to see how the religious establishment dealt with that, and even today. Amen? So let's turn our attention, and if you have a Bible or if you have the Bible app on your device, whether you're watching through, uh, you're watching us through uh a tablet or you're watching us on your iPhone, your Android phone, whatever device you're using, download the Bible app. It's very useful. You can find the scripture. It's Luke chapter 21. I'm reading from verses 1 to 4, and I'm reading the New King James Version. Luke chapter 21, and it begins like this. It says, And he, Jesus, looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury. Mark my words. This is what the word of God says. Jesus looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury. So the rich were giving. But he, as he looked, he also saw a certain poor widow putting in two mites. That's like two pennies compared to what the rich had. She had two pennies. They have two billion. She has two dot, two ten cents. They have what? Two thousand. She has two cents. They have what? Two million. 
So he said, truly I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all for all of these out of her abundance have put in offerings for God. All of them out of their abundance have put in offerings to God, but she out of her poverty put in all the livelihood that she had. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, let us be hearers of the word and doers also. Let me decrease so that you might increase. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts find acceptance in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. We pray for the people of Ukraine who are putting their all right now into making sure they win a war that they did not initiate, that they did not start against a man who is unhinged, against a man who has more than they. We pray for people all over the world who are putting in their all. They're all into resolving relationships. They're all into raising their children. They're all into their businesses. They're all into working. We pray for the people of the world who are poor, who are disadvantaged. We pray for them now that there will be some kind of relief. And we pray for those who are rich, that they look upon the plight of people, reverse the curses, reverse the high prices, reverse the high prices on gasoline, reverse the high prices on food, reverse the high price on everything and make it equitable so all can live. I pray for the rich right now that they do something about wages paid to workers so that workers can live. The workers who work in their homes, the workers who prepare their food, the workers who make it so on the factory floor so that they can continue to live well. In the name of Jesus, let our humanity come up before God. Let him find us in want and in need of his mercy. And may the words of my mouth find acceptance in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. She gave her all. How many of us have given our all? Some of you have had relationships and marriages where you find yourself saying, I am spent. I have given my all. Some of you are women who had to raise children by yourselves. Even men sometimes find themselves being a single father. They have to raise children by themselves. And here you are saying, I have given my all. Some of you are students who are studying. You have no backup. You have no money. My children, I can relate because my children went to school, went to college, and I didn't, wasn't rich, so I didn't have the money to back them up. Right, And they had to find themselves in situations where they're giving their all to study, to get a degree. How many of us work for people? And having given your all, you've worked five years, 10 years, 15 years, and 20 years. And at the end of it, they give you a watch. At the end of it, you get nothing for all that you've given. When you look back over it, how many soccer games have you missed? How many recitals have you missed? How many dinner table and breakfast time have you missed with your children while you were raising them so you could give someone else your all? We women sometimes look at the sacrifices we make. We're in marriages with men who think they can run and gallivant all over the place. You give your all, you stop. You give so much to others, you forget to go to the doctor and check you out yourself. You think about the cost that it would be to the family instead of what it'd be to yourself. How many of you men make sacrifices for your families? I love and admire that when I see a man taking care of his family. I pray the blessings of Almighty God overtake you because there you are making a sacrifice for your family and you don't go to the doctor to check up on that little rumbling you felt in your heart, that little dizziness that you know is something. In this story, Jesus spoke to this woman, and but he also has a message for the religious establishment. See, the religious establishment of the day was watching Jesus' interaction. But the scriptures here tell us that Jesus watched. Who was Jesus? Jesus was the Son of God. So the Son of God, God in three persons, God in Jesus was watching the rich putting their money in the treasury. How many times do we give? And we give mockingly. I, I have often found that rich people are very askance at poor people. I have found that rich people tend to mock 
poor people. They make fun of our levity. They make fun of the ways in which we act and interact. They know that their policies are punitive and punishing. They know that charging so much interest on a loan is punitive, making it inaccessible for people to start a business, making it inaccessible for people to buy a car. They charge so much interest. You buy a car, you end up paying a car loan that's like a mortgage, baby. Come on. We've seen over the last 10 years where car notes went from $99 a month to 199 note. Car notes are exponentially, just completely out of this world. The rich are profiting off the heart of the poor. How many times have we seen that? This is what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying, I'm watching. God is looking down and he's like, hey, hold up. I am watching you. I am watching what you give. Now, Everybody in this story is going to think that this is only confined to just going into the temple. I have words for you today. Our giving to the poor is also not confined to the temple. So it's not just about going into the church and giving. It's also about how we donate to charity. It's also about how we give to organizations that are helping prisoners who just got out. Organizations that are keeping people off the street. Organizations that are feeding the poor, feeding the homeless, providing mental health relief. Organizations that provide help to families. We live in a day and time where the disparities between the rich and poor have never been more evident. It is almost astronomical what it takes to buy food today. It's almost eliminating a middle class. So now there's going to be just the rich and the poor. No middle. Stop, stop calling yourself upper middle class. It is going away because what it's costing you to live, if you really add it up, it's more than what you earn. So you may be earning 200000 a year, but it actually costs you 450000 a year. Your salary is being shored up by your credit card. If you didn't have credit cards, you wouldn't be able to pay for this and pay for that because everything is costlier than it has ever been. Talking about supply chain issues in our modern era post-pandemic, and we find that you can't even buy a car. You can't even find a car to buy. Everything has been marked up three times what it used to be. I was talking to a dealer just recently, and he showed me how much a car costs as opposed to what it actually is at the deliver to the client, to the customer. It is wicked. God is watching. He's watching how much profit we are making of the poor, of the cries and people's bad luck. Have you ever heard the term they tell you to pull yourselves up by your bootstrap? Man, we can't even find a boot anymore to buy it, much less have the straps in the boot to be strapping up. The at least you had a boot that was a security blanket to keep you from the cold. People can't even work today. They're paying people $15 an hour. That's not a livable wage. Eaten out by inflation. Have you been to the gas pump lately? Have you been to Costco or one of the purveyors of food? Have you seen how much it costs to live? God is watching us. Are we giving or all? Are we doing anything about it? Is it enough to say, well, it's supply chain issues? Is it enough to say, well, raw materials cost me more? When your lifestyle is outside the realm of what is considered normal. We're recording this at the time right now when Russia has invaded the Ukraine. Imagine what it is like for the people who are left behind in the Ukraine. Everybody had to take foot and run, get women and children out as much as possible. Are you hearing me? So now we have created an international refugee crisis. Now what's going to happen when this foolish, unnecessary war has happened? What's going to happen? People are forever displaced, they're forever traumatized. The people who survive it have to deal with post-traumatic stresses for the rest of time as a result because one guy decided that he has all the power and he has some nukes that he can press a button and he can do whatever. God is watching. Let me tell you something, folks. None of us are beyond God or outside the realm of God's ability to reach us. None of us. God has a way of getting to each and every person on this planet. 
you might think that you're sitting in a place where you're so wealthy that disaster can't happen. I'm happy for you. That means you have several layers so you can provide protection for your family and you can, you don't have to worry about that. That's great. But God is still watching all of us. What contributions are we making to affect people's lives? You are a politician who is in charge of public policy. Are you enacting public policy that helps the poor and benefits the poor? Or are you enacting public policy because some contributor to your campaign paid you so that you could do something that favors them, write a policy that favors them? God is watching. God is watching even some of us. You get some money to take care of your children, but you go and spend it out. God is watching those of us who don't take care of our children. Our children suffer because we are not on spot. We're asleep at the switch or we're completely absent. What about fathers who have abandoned their children? We should take a page out of the, the, the people in Ukraine. Men put their wives and their children on buses to get them out of harm's way and they go back to fight. That is what we call old school. That is what we call men. Where are the rest of you all? You are sleeping and you have multiple women coming in and out of your house. Do you know where your children are? Do you know if they eat this morning? Did they eat? Are they going to have dinner? Do they have a provision for tonight? Are you providing for them? Where are you as their father providing the protection for them? At the end of it all, when we all have to lay down in that pine box and lay on our backs and look up to an almighty God, what will we have to say? Are you going to be able to say, I gave my all? Are you going to be able to say, I did the best that I could. I poured my all into my life. I poured my all into my children, into my family, into my community to make my world a better place. Are we going to be able to say that? Or are we going to sit back and say, well, I could have, I would have, I should have. We are so self-centered sometimes. We are beyond the point of being selfish. We concentrate only on me, 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 and what feels good. The pandemic has brought certain realities to the forefront. We now look at people whom we celebrate, actors and entertainers, and you realize that all your support, financial support of them over the years has made them richer than you could ever be. And now you look at the disparities between their way of life and yours, and you can't imagine. Imagine this, we're talking about a war in the Ukraine and a news article popped up on my cell phone last night that Kim Kardashian bought a jet for 95 million. Now, I love everybody, but seriously, she made her money by making a sex tape, but you all supported it. And now look at the disparity between the rich and the poor. Did she give her all? I'm sure she has charitable fun, uh, giving and charitable organizations that she contributes to. And I support everybody who does that. But I want us all to think that you don't have to be a millionaire to give. I am not a millionaire, but I started something because I recognized that as much as I had to endure, there are women who have to go through the same thing. What are you doing right where you are? So I made some notes that I want us to keep in mind about how Jesus views giving. Here is the thing. The basis of most religions is what? Giving to the poor, being charitable to the poor. You can't say that you're a Christian if you don't have an active plan to give to the poor. Now, I'm not talking about the preachers who use Malachi 3 and 8 and watch poor people walk into their services and give their rent money because they're so desperate for a miracle. They're so desperate for relief. They will do anything that he says. So they give up their all. And he takes their money and actually makes a mockery of them and laugh about it. Because the next morning he sends his wife, his girlfriend, and his various baby mamas to go take that money and go spend it indiscriminately. Those people are giving their all. I'm not talking about them. They have their own recompense to come. The question of the story is how God watches, how God watches what we give, who we give, and what will God do about it. God is watching it all. We all give our offerings. When we pay our taxes, we are giving an offering. Paying your taxes is giving an offering. 
paying your taxes means that, okay, I earn more than the next person. I earn more than a hundred persons around me. I earn more than a hundred million people around me. I pay my taxes to ensure that other people can live. That's an offering. When public policies are enacted, that is an offering. We need to remember that the poor will always be with us. So I made some notes. Here's some stuff that I think we should keep in mind. Jesus is watching what we do. Jesus is watching how much we give based on what we have. It makes no sense that I have a hundred million dollars and I write you a check for a dollar, does it? It makes no sense that I have a hundred million dollars and I write you a check for ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars does not move me with a hundred million dollars. Are you hearing me? Jesus is watching how much we give and what we give. The third thing to remember is that this poor woman gave everything she had. She had two pennies, but she gave it all. What are you giving is your all. You're going to school. It's your all. Your parents give you a dollar to help you do something. It's all. They give you money to go make a down payment on a house. Give it all. I'm not into this modern age where people spend 25, 35,000, borrow money to go have a fantastic wedding, but you don't have anything to live afterwards. You don't have a house to move into. You don't have money to go pay down on a mortgage and start living. I'm not into that way of life. Your people are giving your all. What are you doing with it? We have to watch what we give and what we do with it. We have to become better stewards and better stewards and watch over what we have. There's nothing wrong with going on vacation. There's nothing wrong with treating yourself. It's all part of self-care mechanisms that are required today to live because of the high stress environments that we live in. But we also have to watch, do you give? Amen? Faith, hope, and charity. We can't forget that crux of these three, they are the apex of our Christianity. Have faith in God. Hope for a better tomorrow. As we live in a day and time now where the president of Russia is threatening nuclear activity. We need hope. But charity, we must always give and give to those who can't help themselves. Giving to the poor is an extension of our Christianity. It's not, it's not self-serving. We have to watch that. Are we giving to attract attention? Or are we giving because we see a need and we're trying to satisfy? We have the religious establishment has strict laws of adherence, don't they? And it has messed everything up. It began from Jesus' time. Jesus came, tore the veil of the temple, turned over all the tables to get rid of the religious establishment so we would wake up and realize that that way of living is harmful to people. To this day, what modern religious establishment do is tell everybody you got a tithe. Now, if you're earning $100, seriously, and 10% of $100 is $10, you need that $10. You have to buy gas to put in your car. You have to feed your family. Seriously, asking people to give 10% is really wicked. But that's the religious establishment. Jesus came to do what? To redeem us from the curse of the law. We're not doing that. We still are focusing on strict adherence to laws that do what? That are stringent and that hurt the people. Jesus is saying right here, he's watching us. Yeah, he's watching us to see what we do. We need to stop punishing the people with all these punitive policies. This poor woman gave her all. And out of that, what does God say? He's going to give her eternal life. We have to respect people's sacrifices. You have an employee working for you and you're paying them $10 an hour. And you're looking at them knowing it costs them $20 an hour to come to work. But you only give them 10 Respect that. Have some respect for people's time and people's sacrifice. Have some respect for people's humanity. And I'm saying this to the president of Russia right now. Have some respect for the rest of us. Have some respect for the people in Ukraine. We don't need a war. We don't need nukes threatening our stability and our safety on this planet. You have a problem, go to God with it. Why don't you call your, your priest and ask them to come and pray with you? But I'm going to pray right now for those of us who might be living right now and saying, Harriet, I have given my all. I don't have anything left. What do I do? I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus, Father, in Jesus' name. Meet these folks. Meet us at the point of our need. 
help the people who are watching. Stop this wicked war. Provide a way out for all of us. Hover over us, oh God, and give us peace. Give Putin peace in his heart. Give the people of Ukraine some relief. Give people in war zones relief. People in Syria, people in Nigeria, people in other parts of the world who are experiencing wars. Help those who cannot help themselves and help those of us who write public policy. And those of us who can give, we pray right now that we become better stewards and that we can give in the mighty name of Jesus. It is so. Amen. Amen. Be blessed, everybody, for watching Down to Earth with Harriet Kemmerich. For more information on our products and our books, visit my website at www.harrietkemmerich.com. And remember to follow us on Twitter and on Facebook as you receive daily inspirational messages. And why don't you send us a seed? If the Lord lays it on your heart to send us a seed, remember the scripture in Ephesians 3 and 20 that says, unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly for all that you can ask or think for so many years, that scripture has enlivened me and empowered us here at Harry Kamek Ministries. So thank you so very much. And remember to watch us again on this network. Hey there, everybody. This is Harriet Kamek, the host of Down to Earth. I'm an author and speaker, and I wanted to talk with you for just a few seconds about what the scriptures have done for me. Here's a scripture in the Bible, and it's found in the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 20. And it says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly, according to, above, according to all that we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Imagine that. Now to him who is able. Just think about that. Now unto him who is able. I remember reading that scripture years ago, and I can't begin to tell you how the word of God has come alive in my life, how it brought life to my body and brought life to my circumstances. And how when I thought about it, now to him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. In fact, when I started Harry Kemmerich Ministries in 2006, me and my bold self, full of faith, went down to the bank and ordered checks. Guess what was printed on those checks? Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. But the last part of that verse that says, according to the power that works in us, let us keep in mind that we are enjoyed with God. We are co-laborers with God for the dream that he has given us, for the work that he has given us to do. So I want you to do me a favor. I want you to sow an Ephesians 3.20 seed into Harriet Cameron Ministries. Why don't you do that? It's only $20. You can do that per month. Help us to bring the gospel. We don't just talk the talk. We do the walk because on the